The history of dinosaur paleontology at Carnegie Museum of Natural History began in late 1898, when the museum's founder, Andrew Carnegie, was captivated by a newspaper headline that read, most colossal animal ever on earth just found out west. He quickly scrawled a note to the museum's director, William Holland, that said, can't you buy this for Pittsburgh? Try. In the spring of 1899, financed by Carnegie, Holland organized the museum's first dinosaur expedition and dispatched two newly hired paleontologists to Wyoming, where they rendezvoused with local fossil collector Bill Reed. Unfortunately, however, the team soon learned that the story of the supposed most colossal animal was based entirely on the upper end of a thigh bone of a huge sauropod, or long-necked plant-eating dinosaur, later identified as a patasaurus. Happily, the crew didn't give up there. In early July 1899, after several weeks of further disappointment, they hit the jackpot with the discovery of a bone near Sheep Creek, Wyoming. Further digging would reveal the nearly complete skeleton of a large, long-necked sauropod. Later that year, boxes were constructed and the bones sent to the museum in 130 crates. The dinosaur needed a boxcar of its own. The next year, in 1900, two other Carnegie Museum paleontologists collected and sent to Pittsburgh a second partial skeleton of the same kind of sauropod lying next to the first one. Back at the museum, technicians called fossil preparators worked feverishly to extract the two specimens of the new dinosaur from the rock. In July 1901, museum paleontologist John Bell Hatcher named it Diplodocus carnegii in recognition of Andrew Carnegie's support. Plans were made to display a fully reconstructed 85-foot skeleton of Diplodocus that would include real bones from the two known specimens, plus a third discovered in 1903. Because the existing museum was too small to house this giant, a new wing had to be built, and the expanded Carnegie Museum of Natural History was born. In 1907, the mounted original skeleton of Diplodocus went on display as the centerpiece of the museum, and it still stands here to this day.